Hi everyone, Miss Slocum here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to begin a Pablo Picasso inspired self portrait. To do this, you just need a blank white piece of paper, a pencil, and a black marker to trace your lines with later. To start, we're going to create our head shape and that's just going to be a basic oval. It's pretty large in size, but I'm leaving some space on the top and the bottom because I will be adding hair and a neck, which is my next step. I'm gonna create my neck and curve down for my shoulders right off the page. And then I'll draw a little line here to separate my shirt from my neck. My next step is to find the center of my oval and I'm gonna move a bit to the left and that is where I will draw my nose. I have a few extra lines here, but that's okay. When I trace it over with marker, that'll get rid of that. Now Pablo Picasso would draw his human faces to show multiple angles at the same time. In our drawing, half of our face is going to be a profile, meaning the side, and the other half is going to be facing forward. We're going to begin with our profile side, and I'm going to start at the top center of my oval and create a forehead shape that curves in right before the nose. I already drew the nose so I could skip over that. I'm gonna draw a line for above my lips. I'll draw two bumps to be my top and bottom lip and end on a chin that goes right off the bottom of that oval. I now have the profile of my face. Continuing on my profile side, I'm going to draw what looks like a V or a less than sign right in between my forehead and my nose. I'll draw an oval at the very opening of that, attaching the top and the bottom, and that's going to be the colored part of my eye, also known as the iris. And then we're gonna erase everything inside of that oval. Next, we'll draw some curved eyelashes on the top and the bottom, and put an eyebrow right over top of that eye shape, and the eyebrow should come pretty close to the forehead line. All right, we're going to draw the eye on the side of the face, which is facing forward. So this eye is just going to be like a football, lemon, almond shape, your standard eye shape, and put a big circle in there for your iris. Right to the left of the nose shape, I'm going to draw like a narrow C shape to be the side of my nostril, and the sideways oval to be the actual nostril. Profile side lips are almost going to look like a sideways heart with a line right in the middle. It should line up to the bumps you drew for lips and you can have it smiling or straight faced, it's up to you. I'm going to put some eyelashes on the left side. These are going to be more straight than on my profile side. And I will draw another eyebrow right on top. You can choose to draw a nostril on the front facing side if you want, but that's up to you. To do your lips on the front face, you're continuing the mouth line from the profile side, and you could change the expression if you want to a frown or an even bigger smile. And from the top of the lip on the left side, I'm going to continue that line and draw it out and just having it end on a point. We will add some ears on both sides, and usually an ear is gonna line up to the corner of the eye and the bottom of the nose, but this is a Picasso portrait, so if your ears are a little off, that's okay. We're working in cubism. I'll draw two pupils inside of my irises, and I can color those in, and it's time for hair. Now, I think it's really fun here to have two different hairstyles on both of the sides. And when you're drawing a hairline to start, it's very important that you start at least at the top of the ear. Otherwise, it's going to look like you're wearing a bad wig. So on my right side, I think I'll do some spiky hair that's coming down. And I wanna go over my eyebrow, so I will overlap that. And I'll do a more traditional plain hairline on the left. Now, if you have very short hair and you wanna keep it short, you can finish here. If you wanna add more hair outside of it, all you need to do is go a little bit above that original oval headline that you drew 
and add your hair on the outside. Now you hear me say a lot that hair is a shape and not a bunch of lines. So I don't want a bunch of scribbles on top of your head to be your hair. You wanna draw the outline of the hair shape and add some texture lines in afterwards. So on my left side, I've created just a basic wavy hair and I'll throw some texture lines in there. And I think on this side, I want to put like a, maybe I'll do a funky ponytail. So I'll start with a hair tie and I'll draw a ponytail coming out of there. But we're gonna make it a little wackier and I'm gonna have it come down straight on the side as well. Feel free to get as creative as you want with these different hairstyles. You can even add accessories or hats if you'd like to. On my left side, I think I wanna wear a little flat beanie, so I'm going to draw that right on top of my head. Put a little barrette there too. To add some extra Picasso flair to this portrait, we're going to add shapes on both sides of our face. And I want them to look balanced, but not identical. So you see I put a circle on my right side and a triangle of a similar size on the left. And I'll put some triangles here. And you can add, let's say, five to six shapes on both sides, making sure that they look different, but balanced. Once you're done all of your unique shapes and designs, we're going to draw a line that separates the neck as well. I'm gonna connect it to my profile side, work my way down. I'm doing touch-ups along the way. Maybe I'll narrow my neck on the right a bit. We will also continue that neckline down through the shirt so there are two different sides. Kind of like how we have two different hairstyles, I think it's fun to have two different shirt designs. To finish off our sketch, we're just going to add any additional accessories that we want to. You do things like earrings, necklaces, scarves, whatever you want. I'm just going to do two different necklaces on either side. You don't have to worry about putting anything in the background because we will be cutting this out before it is finished. Our last step is to use a black marker to trace over all of our pencil lines. You can make corrections along the way if you'd like to. I know that's something I do. Oops, I almost forgot. Whenever I'm using a Sharpie, I always like to use some sort of placemat because as we know, Sharpies tend to leak through the paper. see I switch to a fine tip marker and that's just to get any tiny little details this isn't required but if you have some very small areas that you want to use a thin marker for go right ahead once you're done tracing all of your pencil lines you can finish by erasing any extra pencil that might be peeking through okay that is it for today I hope that yours turned out really cool looking I can't wait to see them when they're finished Next week, we're going to go over how to color these portraits. All right, everyone. Until next time. Bye-bye.